Okay, this problem, we also want to find the center and the radius and also the graph. However, what we notice about this is this is not written in the standard form. So because it's not, that means I can't tell right away what the center and the radius is going to be. So I need to do something to this equation to get it into the standard form. Now standard form has quantity squares in it. Those are perfect squares. And the only way you can create perfect squares is by doing what's called the complete the square process. So before we do complete the square, I first want to get this set up so I can, I'll be ready to uh, get the numbers that go in there when I do the complete the square steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange some terms. So I'm going to put the x's together. I'm going to leave a space here and then I'll put the y's together and then the 16, I'm going to bring that over to the other side of the equation. I'm leaving spaces in here because when I go through the complete the square steps, I'm going to end up getting numbers that I'm going to add to both sides of the equation. They're, they're going to go in these spaces. So I'm going to do the complete the square step down over here. So we'll complete the square. You're working with the number in front of the non-squared variable. And there's always two steps you're going to do to that. The first step is divide that number by 2. The second step is to square it. I'm going to take 10. First thing I'm going to do is divide by 2 and I get 5. So that's always the first step with complete the square, divide by 2. Next, I'm going to take that number and I'm going to square it. So that's always going to be your step number 2. So step 1 is always divide by 2. Step 2 is always squaring it. The number that you get here when you do complete the square in step number 2, you're going to add that to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to add 25 here, then I'm going to add 25 over there. It's really important to remember to add it to the right-hand side also because if you don't, you're changing the problem and it's not equal to what it originally was. So you want to keep the equation balanced and that's why you add it to both sides of the equation. Next, we're going to do the complete the square steps with negative 8. So I'm going to take negative 8, and again, the steps are divide by 2 and square it. Divide by 2 and you get negative 4. And then you're going to square the negative 4 and you get 16. The answer you get in step number 2, you're going to add that to both sides of the equation. So now, now that you've done this, we've created a perfect square here and a perfect square there, and now we're going to factor it. Now when you factor it, because it is a perfect square, it's going to look like this. You're going to have an x here and you're going to have a y there. So the shortcut way of factoring this is whatever answer you get in step number one, that's what's going to go inside the parentheses. So because I got a positive 5, that means I put a plus 5 inside there. I got negative 4 for step one here. That goes in that parenthesis, so I have y minus 4 squared. And then this side, you want to add all that together. So I have negative 16 and positive 16 cancel. I'm left with 25. So now I have this written in the proper standard form. Since I have it in this form, I'm ready now to find my center and my radius. My center is going to be opposite sign of this and opposite sign of that. So opposite sign of plus 5, I get negative 5. And then it was negative 4, now it's going to be positive 4. So my center is negative 5, 4. My radius is going to be the square root of this number right here. So square root of 25 is going to be 5. We're doing the square root because standard form tells us that this is going to be r squared. So if this is r squared already, that means the square root will give us just r by itself. Now that I have this complete, I'm ready now to do the graph. I want to first start with my center. Negative 5 and 4 will be right here. And then I'm, I need to go up, down, left, and right 5 because that's my radius. So I'm going to go up 5. I'm going to go down 5 to the left 5, and to the right 5, I'm going to go over 4 to here, and I'm going to go one more over. Actually, this is already 5 here, so I'm going to get right on this axis is where the other dot's going to be. So this, this graph is actually tangent to the y-axis. And I'm going to draw this, and it looks like an egg, but it's really a circle, so this is going to be your completed graph.